how do muscles grow the complete video probably don't worry the rocketeer in spirit i'm james linker and for people new here i have multiple academic sports science degrees additional fitness certifications and endless dad jokes with an understanding of how muscles grow at the biological level this can help you with planning your training and nutrition i have a small series on this but this is a one-stop all-inclusive digestible video on this topic a shopping mall of muscle growth information and a video which i hope can genuinely be helpful to you importantly a fitness journey can be a winding road of ups and downs and success and failure with adjustments and so the goal of any video like this is to equip you with the knowledge that can help you navigate these deep waters disclaimer images in this video were drawn by me they are for visual purposes only they are not meant to be perfect depictions of the anatomy of muscle fibers they are simplified doodles to help you learn muscle hypertrophy. Muscle hypertrophy is the increase in the size of muscle fibers, not an overly excited trophy, where muscle growth is an anabolic process within the body, the building up of muscle tissue. Within a muscle, you have motor units, and these motor units are activated by motor neurons, messages from the brain, telling these motor units to do something. For example, for your muscles to produce force in response to the lifting that you are performing in the gym. One simple example of this, your nervous system will activate several motor units within a muscle to produce a certain amount of force to overcome the stimulus, to overcome the weight that you are asking it to move. And these motor units contain bundles of muscle fibers. And it is these muscle fibers within these motor units that are increasing in size, muscle hypertrophy, which gives you that overall appearance of an increase in muscle mass, aka the old beach body for that one day of sunshine in the UK per year. I can't draw.com. This is all you get, so pipe down. And so let's go microscopic. Within a muscle fiber, we have a myofibril a rod or a unit where muscle contraction takes place and running along the length of the myofibril we have what is called the sarcomere and this is the specific site within the muscle fiber where muscle contraction occurs and in more depth this is where the sliding filament theory occurs and here's a great visual demonstration for you and I know it's great because I didn't draw it and the sliding filament theory does sound like a budget sci-fi movie however in essence this is where two proteins myosin and actin slide across each other to create muscle contraction muscle movement when you are in the gym performing your exercises you are telling your muscles to contract and move we have many types of muscle contraction for example the concentric phase or the eccentric phase so how do muscle fibers grow muscle fibers can increase in length and this is known as the increase of sarcomeres in series and whilst the increase in length of muscle fibers is viable this is more associated with specific situations such as the hyperextension of a muscle where it is in a cast for example you should have seen the other guy. However, and importantly, it is the increase of sarcomeres in parallel, which is how your muscle fibers are growing in response to your resistance training that you are performing. The stacking of these sarcomeres next to each other, if you like, you can think of the increase of sarcomeres in parallel as that fun commute home or a mosh pit. And I don't know what that second one is. I was just saying that to sound cool. That's the microscopic level of what's happening, which when we take a step back, we see as an overall increase in muscle mass. And so when you think about your resistance training. This may be, for example, weightlifting. This may be calisthenics. How you train specifically is specific and unique to you, as we all have specific and unique characteristics. And that's why when you hear the one-size-fits-all communication on YouTube, for example, is complete junk. For example, this training method is good for everyone. This training method is bad for everyone. That is not analytical. That is junk information, as we all have unique characteristics. We have to understand the advantages and the disadvantages of specific training protocols and apply them to ourselves. However, when you do train for muscle growth, you do need to challenge the muscle and overload the muscle. And you can do this by using many forms of resistance training and using multiple rep and set ranges as training is variable in nature. But then to make things even more complicated, we have two categories of muscle growth. We have contractile hypertrophy, and this is really your focus with your resistance training. This is when you are increasing the contractile components of muscle, the muscle fibers. And then we have non-contractile or what is known as sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. And this is the increase in the size of the muscle from non-contractile components such as glycogen. And this is known as non-functional, although this term is debated and there is emerging research that we have now into sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Just be aware that there are different types of hypertrophy. But again, your focus with your resistance training is the contractile hypertrophy element, the stimulus you are creating from your weight training, which will increase the sarcomeres in parallel. And really the theme running through this video 
is don't overthink it. Although we are going deeply into some of these concepts, by the end of this video, and you have to watch the whole video, I will give you the very basic and simple ways that we can take all of these ideas and put them into practical application. And so muscle growth is the response to a stimulus and of course the recovery through nutrition and rest. And resistance training forces adaptation. And to understand this, we can look at what Schoenfeld has communicated as mechanical tension, which is created by force generation and stretch in the muscle. We have concentric force generation and eccentric. And the eccentric can be known as passive tension, the stretching of muscle. And here's a very nice quote from Schoenfeld to help us understand the concept of mechanical tension. Tension associated with resistance training disturbs the integrity of skeletal muscle. And then of course we have the response to this stimulus, which is our rest and our nutrition to of course be part of this muscle growing process. And when we think of nutrition and we think of protein intake, I have a video on the protein hierarchy where I explain that it is your overall protein intake throughout a day, which is more important than other factors. And if you haven't seen that video, I've linked it below, please watch it. But we can think of this resistance training stimulus as a cumulative process, many interlinked concepts, not just mechanical tension, we also have metabolic stress. And metabolic stress is the accumulation of metabolites from your training. Your repeated challenging resistance training creates an environment in your body where you are building up metabolites. And this can contribute to muscle hypertrophy. This is why when we look at training in the gym, we're talking about the repeated dynamic contractions being important for muscle growth. This repeated work, and one element for explaining that is metabolic stress. And then the last concept that Schoenfeld discusses is muscle damage. And this is the one that you will be the most familiar with, the breaking down of muscle fibers, which then repair and grow larger. And this can be thought of as the localized specific muscle damage from resistance training. Now, now the actual significance of muscle damage when we look at other concepts again is highly debated. This is not a hierarchy I'm presenting to you. This is just three concepts that are important when you want to understand how muscle grows. And it's important to remember that muscle is active tissue. Use it or lose it. Your body does not want you to gain extra muscle mass. Your body wants to maintain homeostasis. Your body wants to run efficiently. Your body does not want extra bulk that it then has to use calories to maintain. And this is why your training is something that you will do over your active lifetime. You can't just train, increase muscle mass and then stop because absolutely your muscle will atrophy. You will lose muscle mass. This is why training and nutrition is thought of as a lifestyle if you like. This consistent challenging of your muscle and as you become more intermediate to an advanced lifter, it's harder to gain extra muscle mass. And so you're going to have to train and challenge your body just to maintain and then eke out small additional amounts of muscle mass. Whereas for a beginner, it's much easier to gain muscle mass to start as this is a new stimulus on your body. Protein synthesis and metabolism. So for effective muscle hypertrophy to take place, we need to create what is known as a net anabolic state or net anabolism. And the term anabolic or anabolism is what is simply thought of as the building up of molecules. And the words catabolism and catabolic are the breaking down of molecules. Now, very importantly, there's a massive miscommunication in YouTube fitness, which needs to be corrected. You'll hear the terms, stay anabolic, take this supplement and be anabolic at all times. And that is just simply incorrect. You are not anabolic at all times. You are not catabolic at all times. You are a mixture of anabolic and catabolic throughout the day. And both processes are important to be healthy. However, for muscle growth, you want more anabolism than catabolism over a day. And that's what's called a state of net anabolism. And so when we think of anabolism and catabolism in the body, that can be attributed to proteins, nucleic acid, fatty acid, the old sugars. But in this case, because we're focusing on muscle mass, we're thinking about proteins, amino acids, the building up of amino acids, the chaining together of amino acids, protein synthesis to create proteins to contribute to this muscle growth. And the breaking down of amino acids when we eat protein, which is catabolic. And I have an in-depth video on protein synthesis, the transcription of DNA and the translation, which, which leads to the chaining together of amino acids to form proteins. But I understand that it's an acquired taste. So again, I've linked that video down below. And when these proteins are broken down, in some cases, they're chained together again to form new proteins. This is what's known as protein turnover. Catabolism follows anabolism. So it's your goal to win the day, to be more anabolic over a day for muscle growth. It's the biological game of thrones, if you like. And so here's the important point. Well, how do you create anabolism? Anabolism. Well, your training creates Bruh. anabolism. Intaking food, intaking protein creates 
anabolic stimulus. And then we can go into more depth. We can look at the quantity of the food you're eating, the frequency, the quality, uptaking all nine essential amino acids. But then what creates catabolism? Well, your training creates catabolic processes in your body. Your eating also creates catabolic processes in your body. So what you'll see here is that the same stimulus creates both anabolic and catabolic processes within the body. And that's why catabolism follows anabolism. That's why you have both throughout the day. But to create more anabolism, you just need to do the basics over the day. You need to challenge your muscle with resistance training and you need to intake the required energy balance for muscle growth and a caloric surplus is a state of energy balance associated with increasing muscle mass. You need to intake the adequate amount of protein throughout a day and I have a detailed video on that where the amount of protein you intake is the most important factor. But breaking this down very simply for you to create a net anabolic state, train hard, challenge your muscle and intake the adequate amount of protein and food. And if you do that consistently day by day, week by week, month by month, you are creating this net anabolic state and that will lead to muscle growth. And so one of the problems is when we go deep into the biology, such as this video, it can be so confusing. How do I create more anabolism than catabolism? If both things are happening at once and it's a wave-like structure, don't overthink it. Don't suffer from paralysis by analysis. Just focus on the basics. One massive problem in YouTube and general internet communication is that elite athletes and the more recreational person just looking to increase muscle mass are grouped together. For example, how much protein you should take, how often should you eat, this information is grouped together for everyone and it shouldn't be because elite athletes are a special population. People who have to taper and peak for their events. And for example, elite athletes, sportsmen have a more intricate need for nutrient timing and intake and training than just the general person who's looking to grow muscle, for example. For the general person watching this, if you are not an elite bodybuilder, if you are not an elite sportsman, a professional sportsman, you can focus on the basics challenge your muscle and take in the adequate cumulative amount of food over a day and protein over a day. For sportsmen, for bodybuilders, absolutely, it becomes more intricate. And so then I want to get to the last part of this video to really wrap up all these ideas. And this is progressive overload. In essence, when you think about your training, the increase of sarcomeres in parallel, creating a net anabolic state, how are you gonna do this through your training? Well, however you train, and we're all different. And remember that change equals adaptation. Optimizing towards a specific goal at a specific time is of course very good. But also if we change what we are doing, that can create adaptation. And if we are training over many years, of course we can change up our training, but here comes the key point. No matter how you are training, you have base layer scientific principles for muscle growth that are important for you to be successful. Progressive overload is most commonly achieved by increasing the weight of your lift over time to challenge your body. However, you can also progressively overload by using additional methods, not just weight. You can, for example, manipulate your rest times. You can use different tools of training such as supersets and drop sets and all these different things. Now, none of these are magic per se. They are just tools that you may use. You can also change your exercise order. You can change the types of exercises. You can change your repetitions, your sets. There are so many ways that you can progressively overload. And for beginners, increasing the weight over time will be your go-to progressive overload method. But for the more intermediate to advanced lifter, they have to be more creative with their overload methods as you can't just increase weight consistently over time forever. There will come a point for an intermediate and advanced lifter where that is just not feasible. The weight on the bar would be ridiculous. It's just not practical. And so of course they're going to increase weight with different exercises, but they may also use additional methods of progressive overload. And so when we think of all these things I've talked about in this video, the state of anabolism and your training and all these things, it comes down to the basics. For most people watching this, just focus Focus on the basics of challenging your muscle with resistance training and progressive overload of some form. And that is the stimulus, the recovery, which is of course your rest, but also your nutrition. And then the last point, and this is perhaps one of the most important points, is your consistency of doing this over time. And that is how you're going to create this net anabolic state. That is how you're going to increase your sarcomeres in parallel over time. I'm James Linker. This was Shredded Sports Science. I hope this was useful for you. See you soon.